Hi, I'm Dr. Lulu, your host on the Genetic Genius Podcast. On this week's episode, Dr. Tracy Gaffin discusses everything about men's health, his secrets for high performance health, how to increase sexual vitality and performance, preventative wellness, and the GAINS wave treatment, which is revolutionizing men's health care. Dr. Gaffin is board certified by the American Board of Urology and is a fellow of the American College of Surgeons. He's a leading gains wave provider. Dr. Gavin founded Sarasota Prostate Care in 2014 to provide MRI-guided targeted fusion biopsy and HIFU for prostate cancer patients. In 2017, Dr. Gavin founded Smart Men's Health, which focused on optimizing male performance. He offers a personalized path to helping men maximize sexual health testosterone levels, and prostate health. Dr. Gappin is a published author, and he wrote Male 2.0. Hi, Dr. Tracy. Welcome to the Genetic Genius Podcast. I am so thrilled to have you as a guest today on the show. Hey there. How are you? Great to be here. I'm doing great. It's Tuesday and everything's going fabulous on my end. Awesome. <laughs> great. So today we're going to be talking all about one of my favorite subjects, which I don't talk as much about on my show, but men's health, which is so important yeah. and so needed. Sure. And before we dive deep into men's health, so to speak, um, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about yourself, your passions, your place on the planet. What got you like interested in what you're doing today? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Thanks so much. I am a board certified urologist by training, by background. I spent uh, over 20 years as a urologist, as a robotic surgeon, operating, saving lives every day uh, while neglecting my own health. And it finally <laughs> caught up with me. And through my own health journey, I, I found that our healthcare system is really not made for helping us get optimized or, or get healthy. And I got obsessed with learning about health optimization and genetics and epigenetics and human performance and longevity. And that got me down the path that I actually left my lucrative urology practice that I had built over nearly 20 years to open the Gappin Institute for High Performance Medicine, where I now focus on optimization and uh, epigenetics and using genetics to really help mostly men. We work with women as well, uh, but help uh, high-performing individuals really optimize their health by taking a very individualized approach. Wow, that's great. I love it. That's exactly what this show is about. And especially about realizing that you need to take care of yourself. I think that's also a big part of the show too. <laughs> Self-care, really knowing that burnout is not the key to happiness. And you're based in Florida. Is that where the Institute is located as well? Yes, the Gap Institute is in Sarasota, Florida. I'll tell you, we do a lot of telehealth though with men around the country. And we mm -hmm. actually have clients in Europe and um, Australia, New Zealand. And so we really work around the world via telehealth that, as well. That's so yeah. great. It's one of the best things about COVID that came out. I think you know, there's lots of pluses and minuses, of course, yeah. but one of the best things I think is it's really allowed patients and physicians in this whole global network to really start. And that's yeah. what our world is about. We're, this is 2022. I think we can right. be in that realm, which that's is great. Right. So today we're going to be talking about men's health. And, I, and I'd love for you first to talk about, I feel like there's a stigma around like men don't go to the doctor, quote unquote, for preventative care or wellness. And do you think that's really true? Is it false? Is it changing? Are we seeing some changes in that? Yeah, great question. I see in general, men don't go to a doctor until it's too late. They're reactive, they're passive, they wait for there to be a problem. And that problem typically ends up being sex is, is the, the main driving point uh, mm -hmm. for men to finally get their attention. And book that I published a few years ago called Male 2.0 was all about really shifting that paradigm in men's health away from Male 1.0, which was very reactive, wait for disease to set in and then go to your doctor to get a blue pill to solve all your problems. And, and Male 2.0 is taking a very proactive and individualized, personalized, genetics-based approach to, to human optimization. That's great. And so important. I love the blue pill and the red pill. That's from Matrix, isn't it? All right. <laughs> I think so. Is he like Matrix when he gives you, you want the blue yes. pill or the red pill? That's right. <laughs> but yeah, the blue pill is Viagra too. Yeah. You know, I think too, we are seeing a big shift in men's health. There, yeah. Men are becoming in general more aware of that preventative standpoint. And it's really the key, like you said earlier we're in this disease model and we want to switch that and become into a health model. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And we're dealing with what I call a testosterone pandemic that really doesn't get any attention. 
in that we are seeing testosterone levels plummet worldwide. There are several studies that have shown uh, over the last 20 years that testosterone levels in all men have dropped by about 30%. Wow. And free testosterone, which is actually the bioavailable, more important active form of testosterone, has declined by 45%. That's huge. <laughs> it's massive. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's just not about building muscle or sex. That's about a man's energy, cognitive function, focus, mental clarity, ability to perform at work. It has to do with cardiovascular health as well. And, mm -hmm. and so we're starting to re see a real issue where men's health is deteriorating. And testosterone is one part of that bigger picture, but it, it really is a signal that men need to pay attention. Mm -hmm, so true. And women have testosterone too, right? Are we seeing uh, lower levels of testosterone in women? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And, and we're seeing it in men and women. And I always get the question, why, what the hell is happening? And, and right. we can What's look up at out there. <laughs> yeah. We can look at stress and diet and all that, but it, it's the toxins in our environment that I believe is the biggest culprit. The toxins mm -hmm. are estrogenic compounds called endocrine disruptors that are crushing our hormone function. And it's happening in men and women. We're seeing low testosterone. We're seeing autoimmune disease. We're seeing infertility. We're seeing an increased risk of cancers. We're seeing female health issues as well. It's a big problem. Yeah, so true. I, you know, and I think that people don't realize how much of a change we've had in our toxin level. But like you said, it's the endocrine right. disruptors, but there's so much around us and it's emotional toxicity too. It's not just physical, especially with the pandemic we've had over the past couple of years, sure. that stress toxin, which affects us, especially our hormones. Stress toxin. I, like, <laughs> yeah. I, never, I haven't heard that before. That's good. I'm going to have to use that. Hashtag. <laughs> I'm going to steal that from you. I like yeah. that. No, you can have Very it. Good. You can have it. I just Very good. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think we're really seeing how how the environment and like you said epigenetics is so key and we're seeing so many changes and how our environment is playing a role on how our body functions yeah yeah without question and this gets into a really big focus for my practice is what's called a systems approach to health mm -hmm. and that means we recognize that our body is this complex uh, human system that has numerous inputs that are all ultimately affecting our outcome and yeah. so uh, that means that every toxin in our environment is affecting us. The foods that we eat, the chemicals in our foods, the plastics that our food and drink is, are in, the personal care products that we use. Um, and then we can look at hormones. We can look at the stress levels, our sleep, even the way we think and even the way we breathe actually can affect our body's function as well. So it's understanding how all those inputs really affect our- And not living in a bubble of fear about it, right? That's right. Being <laughs> yeah. proactive and intentional about it all. That's yeah, right. exactly. And so when we're, we're talking about men's health and optimizing wellness, what's kind of like the biggest area of concern that you usually see with your patients that men really need to take the action on today and don't wait? <laughs> Yeah. So great question. I, I would say that mindset's typically the starting point for most men, and that is getting in the frame of reference of taking control of your health, living with intention, recognizing that you need to invest in your health because you have the power to live your best life is really my expression that I like to use. If you look at guys like Paul Allen, founder, uh, co-founder of Microsoft, he was mm -hmm. worth $30 billion at one point. He dies at age 65 <laughs> from lymphoma. Right. It was Steve Jobs, founder of Apple. He died at 56 from pancreatic cancer. These guys build all this wealth. They build these massive businesses, but they would give anything for just one more day. Mm -hmm. And so it's getting guys to be present and engaged and to invest in their health because they have the control and the power to extend lifespan and extend health span. Right. So important. And I love what you said too, about these major people or men that we've had, we, we hold up high on the totem pole and that we, they can set an example for what we can achieve, but also of where we can go with our health. And I think okay. we're really seeing this shift. And I think it's not just in men, it's in with everyone really like we can be proactive, especially in self-care. Like you said, okay. taking the time to look at how you're working How's your stress level? How's your, and have you gone to the doctor in the past year just for a great annual checkup, yeah. <laughs> which can yeah. give us some good information. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> and how do you open the doorway? So you're, we're talking about getting more women, more men to be more open to talking about their sexuality. How do you open that conversation? And do you think that it's changing where men are feeling more comfortable talking about sex earlier on and their sexuality and performance level? 
Yeah, I think that it's becoming a lot more comfortable of a conversation now that we have regenerative solutions out there that are gaining attention and traction like gains wave and prp and exosomes do a lot of stem cell work that kind of stuff and then are starting to realize hey there are all these great options out there for me maybe i should step forward and actually own it and see what we can do to fix it and not just go to their primary care doctor and get a, a the blue or yellow pill like we were talking about earlier, <laughs> but really address the underlying problem. And the stigma is starting to dissolve to where we can actually have a real frank conversation about the cause of the ED and sexual performance issues and how we can help guys overcome that and taking away the embarrassment factor. Right, which is so key to helping men and women be open about sexual uh, problems in their home life or in their dating life, wherever they're having the, yeah. the problems, so to speak. And so when we're talking about having that conversation, one play, one thing I really loved was your Instagram <laughs> because it really it's really friendly. And I think that's really important for both sexes to feel comfortable and not, we're talking about everyone in the sex category, whatever sex you are, to feel really comfortable about expressing your sexuality, but also to know when to get help. <laughs> yeah. When I work with these high-performing men, these executives and entrepreneurs who are living a high-powered stress life, they will often brush that aside. They're so stressed. They're so busy at work that, that if things aren't working well, they're too embarrassed to really seek attention. So mm -hmm. they'll just ignore it. And I, right. I like to emphasize that's a, a normal, healthy part of a balanced life. And that it, it, it's an important part of your relationship, your connection with your partner and loved one, and mm -hmm. that you need to honor it and pay attention to it and, and, and address it. And it's not just for men as well. When I talk about sexual function ED, it's for the women right. as well, because right. you know, the women deserve to be satisfied be happy as well. And it goes both ways. And it's part of a normal, healthy, happy relationship. And it's a critical part of a man's health. And it, it's becoming much more comfortable of a conversation when you put it in that perspective. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. And do you work with your at your clinic with men and women who are transitioning? And what does that look like? Yeah, I, I haven't seen a lot of them, but we, we certainly do. I've worked with a couple in the past, not a ton, but I'm certainly available for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, great. Good. And so we're talking about a uh, specific, like being proactive from that male and female perspective, like you said, and not like brushing your sexual dysfunctions, maybe like under the rug, <laughs> which yes. is, doesn't really help. We're putting them on the shelf. So when we're talking about from the biggest health factors from what's what are those ones you see the most from that sexual dysfunction in men? What are the bi the biggest ones you like cardiovascular health, cholesterol? What are some of those biggest health, health yeah. risk factors? <laughs> yeah. Great question. So I think it's helpful for the listeners for me just to quickly go through some brief anatomy physiology without getting too scientific. <laughs> I love it. I love getting all geeky in science. It's the best. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you won't need a textbook for this part. An erection is simply increased blood flow to the penis. Okay. Right. The arteries to the penis get dilated or enlarged. The pipes get bigger so that increased blood flow can come in. That blood gets trapped in the penis and that's basically an erection. Okay. That's basically what happens. Now let's, let's ask how does that happen? Why does that happen? Well, it happens with signaling molecules called nitric oxide. It's released by the endothelium, which is the lining of those arteries that then works upon itself to cause relaxation of the smooth muscle of those arteries that increases the blood flow. Yep. So it's arterial smooth muscle relaxation, vasodilation causes increased blood flow. All right. That's the hardest most complicated that of uh, physiology we're going to talk <laughs> did about. You get all, did you get that out you know there? <laughs> It'll be a quiz later. <laughs> right. So the question is, what affects that process that I just described? Well, one of the biggest ones that you would never think of is mm -hmm. insulin resistance, which is basically how your body responds to regulating blood sugar. Okay. Your pancreas produces insulin to deal with elevated blood sugar. If your blood sugars are consistently elevated, eventually your body can't handle it anymore, has nowhere to put it, and you become insulin resistant. And, and that's really a, a very early precursor to diabetes. Right. way before hemoglobin A1C gets elevated, way before you're diabetic, but it's a worrisome sign. It's associated with obesity, typically visceral fat. And I see so many men who, who come in and they have the belly fat going, they, they have mm -hmm. metabolic syndrome with low testosterone yep. as well. And this, med, this uh, insulin resistance, you wouldn't even think about it. Guys, all they care about is how do I get better sex? And I'm trying to tell you, look, the stuff you're putting in your mouth is actually affecting your sexual function. This shows you that the system's approach to health, how 
nutrition has everything to do with your sex. So important. Yeah. Nutrition yeah. is key in everything. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So it's what you eat. It's a stress. It's high cortisol. You know, cortisol is our stress hormone. Yep. Uh, cortisol crushes uh, testosterone production. It causes increased storage of visceral fat. It increases, uh, which increases estrogen conversion from testosterone, crummy sleep. Yep. Causes Huge increased one. cortisol level. And so Huge. you see how everything is connected together. Yeah. yeah. So it's putting all these pieces together and uh, as amazing and wonderful, as powerful as I like to pretend that I am, <laughs> kidding aside, um, it's my functional medicine health coaches who work with me as part of my team who are so critical for these men to help them really understand how to integrate the, the, the lifestyle, the accountability mm -hmm. part of things as well, and to really develop what I call our high performance habits. Mm. And so it's putting all those pieces together that's really key. Right. Yeah. I love that. That's great. And when we break it down, it seems so simple. It's all about what we eat, how we exercise, how we sleep, what we drink. It's like those, yeah. if we can just work on those four things and those yeah. pillars, it's so easy. That's right. <laughs> yeah. They're little things, but they're big things. I know. Huge. Yeah. yeah. What are your, some of your top go-tos when it comes to nutrition, when it comes to male performance and you're like, these are the key, let's like top three when yeah. it comes to nutrition. Sure. So the first thing I would say is, is what should you not be eating? Because there's so much debate in the, I'm not going to get into the plant-based uh, keto, paleo, carnivore uh, battle on Twitter. That's, it, it's, it's become comical at this point, but there are two evils in society. If you can get rid of these from your diet, you're going to go a long way. Number one is sugar. So bad. It's, it's the worst. Refined <laughs> processed sugar is the absolute worst. Exactly. And it, it causes insulin uh, resistance. It crushes your hormones. It obviously causes issues with triglycerides. And it promotes fat deposition and everything that's wrong you get from chronically elevated blood sugar. So um, sugar, and we're talking about refined sugars. We're talking about things like the dinner roll on your table. People don't realize that's just pure sugar. That's pure. Right. It's like a donut. <laughs> it is like a donut. Yeah. yeah it's like a donut. Exactly. <laughs> um, and so things like that, things like even fruit, sometimes uh, you think fruit, well, fruits like grapes and watermelon are very high in sugar. Mm -hmm. Whereas fruits like strawberries, uh, blueberries, blackberries, those are much lower in sugar content. If you're going to choose between honeydews, melons, all those very high in sugar as well. So be aware right. of the sugar you're eating, uh, especially the breads, uh, anything that comes in a packaged product. The second thing are the seed oils, mm. the omega-6 polyunsaturated fats, the seed oils, the canola oil, sunflower oil, safflower oil, and those vegetable oils. Those are pro-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. And they promote atherosclerotic disease. They promote early mortality. They promote Alzheimer's disease. And they're definitely affecting vascular function, insulin sensitivity, and definitely erectile function. And so what that means is, this is interesting. One of the healthy snacks I always like to recommend is almonds. Mm -hmm. And so they're, great, they're a great source of omega-3 polyunsaturated, which are the good fats for right. you. Mm -hmm. The monounsaturated or the omega-3 polyunsaturated are the two good types of fat. So you go to the store and there will be a bag of almonds. Look at the ingredients of everything you get, guys. Look at the ingredients and see what's there. One bag says almonds. Fantastic. Looks good. The next bag happened to be dry roasted almonds. Oh, look boy. At the ingredients, <laughs> it's canola oil and almonds. Right. Ugh, and so you're, a good eating a bag, you're eating a bag <laughs> of poison. And so it's really critical that anything that comes in a package, especially look at the ingredients, you'll be shocked at how many items um, have these oils in them. They're pro-inflammatory. You got to do anything you can to avoid them without question. Yeah. Oh, those are great tips. I love those. I'm glad we talked about that. And it's so easy to roast your own almonds, the lowest temperature in your oven or on a little frying pan on the stove. You can just do it. Don't burn them, <laughs> but yeah, just a little roasting. That's easy. And, oh, that's great. And sugar is like battery acid for our arteries. It's just such, battery so toxic. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I love that you brought those two up. So key and the antioxidants berries, so important for cardiovascular health, which is all about sexual function, getting the blood right. to flow in the right place. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So when we're talking, let's talk about biohacking. Cause I, I love talking sure. about this. And so the male listeners out there talking about biohacking for sexual performance, I'd love for you to first talk about like, what is biohacking? What does that even mean? <laughs> yeah. So biohacking is, has become a, a little overplayed uh, over the years. <laughs> Just a now. little. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah. But it's really a term for how can we use technology? How can we use tools to help improve our body function? Mm -hmm. It's really that simple. And, and it's devices, it's tools, it's it's 
cryo chambers, it's PEMF tables, electromagnetic energy, mm -hmm. it's a red light therapy, photobiomodulation, it's a sauna, it's all these different tools and tricks and hacks that we have that most of them have some date. Some of them maybe don't. Some of the, there was recently this thing about red light on your balls, which was interesting. <laughs> the photobiomodulation, modulation, the red light therapy definitely has some benefits and detox benefits. And, and I think there's definitely some value there directly on the balls. I think the data, the jury's still out. The data yeah, that might, that might backfire. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, but I, I love using wearable technology mm -hmm. to help guide men toward doing the right thing. And mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. Something that probably you haven't heard of here is continuous glucose monitoring, CGM. Mm -hmm. Almost all of my men who work with me, I have them uh, use continuous glucose monitoring as part of our uh, N1 performance health program, where we can understand what foods or activities are affecting them. Mm -hmm. And if so, how? Right, so, exactly. Yeah, you so data. <laughs> it's data. Yeah. And anything you can measure, you can manage and you can use that information to your advantage. And so I'll give you an example. I have a, a guy, Tommy, he's a wealth advisor I've worked with for years. And he found when he first he started using the CGM that when he would eat potatoes, it wouldn't touch him. For example, white potatoes, some people blood sugar spike with him. It didn't touch him at all. Right. Red wine actually didn't touch him. Hmm. White rice through the roof. Right. Like a huge spike. <laughs> huge spike. Sushi through the roof. Oh, sushi. <laughs> yes. Now he would eat salmon, fish, chicken, and then eat vegetables like I would teach educators do and then try white rice. Nothing. Because he was very, eating ne it Very combo. negligible jump. So yeah, a lot of it is understanding which foods are your kryptonite. Yeah, exactly. Which foods you do well with, but also understanding the order of foods as well. Mm. I've seen a lot of guys where their quarter, uh, their excuse me, their blood sugar levels will spike when they have not eaten anything. Exactly, your body's and, like a sponge, right? Just like take it and then maybe yes. get that glucose to the brain. It's quick exactly, as you can. <laughs> yeah. So, and that's a testament to the effect that stress and crummy sleep can have on your blood sugar levels. Where you can, when you see that data, it helps you really have a very different understanding of it. And yeah, it's, oh well, yeah. And yeah. can you talk about how the glucose monitor works? Where do you wear it? Yeah. Um, sure. How does it? How do you keep the track? I'll move of the my monitor? camera here but for for those of you who are happy to be watching this. I'm showing my upper arm here on the side, um, the the outer side of your arm you put a device it looks like a little ring it's about the size of a half dollar or so and there's an applicator like a click i remember those stamps you used to use for your address on, on an envelope where you put like yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's kind of like that where it has that's the applicator you put it on your arm and you stamp it and it will plunge this little tiny sensor below the surface of your skin into what's, into what's called the interstitial fluid, which is the space just below your skin. And it, it's a, a surrogate for the, your blood sugar levels. And you don't even feel it. When it goes in, you literally right, don't even feel like it. like a little tiny. <laughs> like a nothing, exactly. Yeah. And then that, that will stay in for two, depending on which device you use. Some of them only last a week. The one that I recommend that I use lasts two weeks at a time. And that device will uh, then send signals to an app on your phone to where you can track your blood sugar 24 hour, 24 seven uh, mm -hmm. for those two weeks. And then at that time you change it, you put it on a new device. I, I pr actually prescribe these through uh, your pharmacy. And for most guys, they will actually use their insurance for it, even if they're not diabetic and it gets at least partially covered. I've done it with myself a, a number of times as well. It's a fantastic way to really dive deep into your physiology. Yeah. Oh, there's it's such a great way. I love how our technology is advancing and especially from the, the male brain perspective, because it's like that That's information, right. that data it's like really easy for the male brain to comprehend and understand. Yeah, yeah. I know how my body works. <laughs> and we are simple creatures. Exactly. We, we need it that simple. Yeah, We all are. But I think the, the female brain just goes, it wants to see different aspects. But I, so I think that monitoring, having a device where we can monitor the body for everyone is so important. And there's, they're coming out with all different ways now. And so easy to see it on your phone. It's really the wave of the future where we can have that instantaneous result and make an instantaneous change in what we're doing. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So key. Yeah. Okay. So that's one of the wonderful biohacking tools. And is that one of your favorite ones that you use for getting into the DNA and cellular function? I use that a lot. You, you mentioned DNA. I, I, I dive deep into genetics with all my guys as well. So genetics is really a key part of it as well. And I, I don't know if that's called necessarily biohacking, but I, I love the data <laughs> that we get from genetics uh, in terms of 
what to eat, what not to eat, what, you know, mm-hmm. what micronutrients might need additional support, what testing might we need, detoxification, mitochondrial um, function. So I, I love genetics for for really uh, creating a, a foundational baseline for guys. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of times that will guide additional testing. Do we need to do organic acid testing? Do we need to look at at microbiome testing? Or, you mm-hmm. know, for a lot of guys, uh, micronutrients like vitamin A is a great is a classic one where certain guys will not convert beta carotene into retinoic acids. So those BCMO variants you need to mm-hmm. give them the retinoic acid, for example, a lot of examples of how we can use genetics to really individualize health. Yeah. And that's another wave of the future. We're really seeing like, we can look inside ourselves and see how the, the body's functioning from the inside out and, and actually give, it's like a little microscope can go in and yeah. actually give us the data that we can make the change. And I love that you can see from that nutritional perspective and from the exercise perspective and w- I think it's really eye-opening for patients to be able to see, oh, wow, this is me. And this is how, when I do this change, it's actually what my body needs. It's so amazing. Yeah. yeah. It, it is empowering. And there was actually a study that came out three or four years ago that showed that for people who know their genetics, they have a, a, a real uh, statistically significant transformation in their health. Mm -hmm. and their behavior because of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. I see it in my patients when I'm doing, working with their genetics, they have that information and they can see, wow. And and for some people, it really shows them a difference in what they've been doing, which hasn't been working. And then, oh, it's not me. It's, it is me. It's their genetics. So they can, it's like they can have a different relationship. Yeah. 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 So interesting. Are there specific genetic markers that you're looking for in relationship to uh, men's health or men's sexuality and specific like ED function and things like that? Yeah, great question. I, I look at it more, uh, again, from the systems perspective, where I'm looking at markers for a uh, nutritional standpoint, you know, what food should they be eating, markers of inflammation, when it looks to look at endocrine disruptors, like the IL-6 genes for mm-hmm. you know, endocrine disrupting toxins, look at mitochondrial function, that's a big one for energy, looking at the glutathione and the thyroid oxygen catalase for detoxification, look at the insulin, re- there's a panel of about 18 or so genes that I use to look at for insulin resistance, mm-hmm. that gives mm-hmm. us risk of insulin resistance. There are a number of hormone related ones that look at conversion of testosterone to DHT that's valuable, estrogen aromatization, looking at TSH when it comes to thyroid, your Dio1, Dio2, these have to do with how thyroid get converted uh, from T4 into T3 in the body and brain. Uh, So that's really valuable as well. And again, I really emphasize that, that, that all the systems connect. And that the, the penis does not live in isolation, so to speak. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> this is a good way to think about it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that you mentioned those markers. And, and that really gives also a view of our body is different, but it's also connected because all those cells and all those genetics and DNA are working together to help everything function in full systematic um, working order. So let's talk about the gains wave treatment because I want to really hear about this is yeah. amazing. So what is it? How does it work? What what makes it so different from other types of quote unquote allopathic treatment where we're talking about maybe doing yeah. a specific injection therapy and different pharmaceuticals. Oh, and I did want to ask a question about hair loss. So I'm going to put it out there. So I don't forget to come back to yeah, it. Yeah. You got, we'll come back to the DHT. <laughs> yeah. We'll come back to that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so w- when we look at ED treatment in my uh, two decades in urology, the answers were really, here's your Viagra Cialis. Here's your penis pump. Here's your injection therapy, mm-hmm. or we'll put in a surgical penile. That's it. And those are very, very short-term Band-Aid solutions that are are not really addressing the underlying problem. Mm -hmm. They're really more a short-term quick fix. Right. We now have a number of regenerative options that are focused on remodeling and repairing and restoring normal blood flow to the penis so that men don't need those other treatments. Exactly. <laughs> and so that that's where low intensity shockwave therapy comes in. Shockwave therapy is technology that we've used for kidney stones for decades. And they found in the lab that low intensity shockwave therapy or signals would stimulate a process called angiogenesis, which means mm-hmm. new blood flow creation. Right. And they discovered that it was by activating stem cells to create new highways, arteries for blood flow. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we got from treating kidney stones to treating the penis is because they found that it was helpful at improving sexual function. Mm -hmm. And so that's the concept behind gains wave. It's a a regenerative solution to, to restore normal, healthy, optimal blood flow to the penis. 
And it's a great treatment for properly selected men. Mm -hmm. It's not for every man by any means, but it's certainly a great treatment for the right man. And I will often combine it with other regenerative solutions that will also help pr promote normal blood flow as well. So one of those is PRP. Mm -hmm. PRP is platelet-rich plasma, where we draw your blood, we spin it down in a centrifuge and extract out all the good healthy growth factors and inject that back into the penis to help stimulate, again, a repair and remodeling of the penis. And then I also use exosomes as well. And exosomes are, are easy to think of as simply the secretions of stem cells. Mm -hmm. And exosomes are uh, another great way to really promote uh, healthy restoration of blood. Great. I love that. That's a wonderful sounding treatment. And what about ozone therapy? Is that something that you use in your practice as well? Is that I don't helpful? personally, I don't personally use ozone therapy myself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know a lot about it. I'm going to be interviewing someone coming up soon oh, cool. in a couple of weeks. So yeah, I'm tune gonna, back in. I'm going to listen in. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm excited out. to learn Perfect. more about it myself. And so when you said that it's not for every uh, specific male, do you have a uh, a questionnaire. How do you determine that factor? Yeah, it's really a, an assessment looking at each individual man, what's the cause of their ED and whether that would be a good solution. So to explain that further, there are really, I like to think of ED as having four main etiologies. One is blood flow, which is the majority, probably 80% of men is lack of good blood flow. And that mm -hmm. could be either arterial insufficiency, not enough blood coming in, or it could be venous leak. Mm -hmm. which means blood leaking out. So blood's right. coming in okay, but then it leaks right back out, okay? Mm -hmm. If you have venous leak, then the problem is not increased blood flow. The problem is that it's just leaking right back out. Yeah. And so you see how those guys would not necessarily respond well to right. increased blood flow. Yeah. <laughs> no, that wouldn't be the, the yeah. solution there. <laughs> That's right. The second yeah. cause of ED is nerve issues. Like you've had a radical prostatectomy uh, or mm -hmm. you've had a colon uh, resection. Yeah. colon cancer. Those would be things that might damage the nerves. If you're diabetic or have peripheral neuropathy where mm -hmm. the nerves get damaged. Third one would be hormones. So if you have specifically testosterone, for example, or other hormone issues, then that could potentially affect testosterone or affect sexual function. And then the fourth one would be really just social cognitive issues. I'll, I'll put it, for example, porn addiction. Mm -hmm. um, I see this a lot where guys have issues with, with porn, right? It disrupts normal neurotransmitter function in your brain. And now you can no longer get the same pleasure out of sex as you could normally. And so right. uh, that's a little, di those guys wouldn't respond to games obviously either. And, right. and so that's what I mean by really it's taking a history, doing an exam, understanding the, the source of the ED and, and choosing the, the proper treatment for them. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. And what's the success rate that you see? Is there a percentage that you've seen in your practice? Yeah, because I don't treat every man, a lot of centers out there will treat every man that walks in the door who has a credit card. Right. Um, because I select those patients properly, I'd probably say, I would say about 80% of men have at least improvement enough to the point where they're satisfied with the outcome. Wow. So that's huge because yeah, I think, uh, especially to have a yeah, solution that men can turn to because they're, right. they're searching for things that are more natural, which the uh, gains wave treatment is a natural treatment. That's right. Yeah, it's not using a pharmaceutical or something like you said, like a Band-Aid treatment where in addressing the symptoms, I'm sorry, not addressing the symptoms, addressing the root cause of the problem, the systems. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Right. And what about something like genetics, like a Klinefelter syndrome, where there's actually a, a, a difference in the chromosome genes? Yeah, it, interesting. We learned about that in medical school, learned about that in residency. I've not seen a single client filters patient in my 25 year <laughs> career. Like, nope. now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, it's, it's pretty rare. I think I just, it just came but, into my mind. I was like, it's good for the board exam, though. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They ask it. They always ask the They're one out there question somewhere. Yeah. Is like that you would never be used in your practice. I'm prepared. <laughs> right. Yeah, totally. Back to my question about hair loss. Was yeah. that something that you work with in your practice with the male patients? Because yeah. I know it's a huge concern for a lot yeah. of patients. Sure. Yeah. Do a, lot, mm -hmm. do a lot of work with hair loss. There are peptides are, are a, a great um, option for hair loss, but hair loss in general is from DH, the DHT receptor, which is dihydrotestosterone, which is what testosterone can get converted into. It's a much more active, more androgenic hormone than testosterone. Mm -hmm. um, and, and DHT activation of the receptor is what we believe is the biggest cause of hair loss and has, mm -hmm. tends to be mostly genetic. And so the, very rarely, I'd say maybe, gosh, I don't know, maybe two, 3% of men who go on testosterone therapy uh, may develop hair loss because of that conversion to DHT, but pretty rare. But for men who've had hair loss, so there are some great peptides out there for that, but it's, yeah, it, it's a DHT receptor. A lot of guys say, well, what about the, the Rogaine and the topicals and stuff like right. that? That is only for certain types of hair loss. 
Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not for the DHT hair loss. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Most, most guys, the hair loss, most guys are coming in for the Rogaine's and all that don't. And uh, so let's talk about peptides because you mentioned peptides. I love talking about peptides. So what are peptides? How can we use them in, in our daily life, so to speak? Peptides. They're awesome. (laughs) Yeah. uh, Peptides are simply short proteins. To put mm-hmm. it very plain and simple, they're short, they're chains of amino acids. If they're, if it's shorter than hundred amino acids in length, it's a peptide. If it's longer than hundred amino acids, it's called a protein. It's purely semantics. It's basically the same thing. <laughs> it's basically the same thing. They're very important in that they have very precise functions and they're signaling molecules that already, but our bodies already recognize. Because mm, so it's a protein. It's a protein. Exactly. Yeah. So for example, mm-hmm. insulin is a peptide. Mm-hmm. There is a peptide that mimics growth hormone releasing hormone and from Mm -hmm. our hypothalamus that tells a pituitary, hey, make more growth hormone. Right. And that's awesome because as we get older, our growth hormone levels decline. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So so rather than take exogenous growth hormone and deal with some potential negative consequences, we can boost our own production of growth hormone, for example. Mm -hmm. It helps you burn weight, build muscle, sleep better. One of the biggest benefits of that sleep energy and so on. There are peptides to reduce inflammation. BPC comes from enzymes in your stomach that help reduce either inflammation, irritation in the gut. It helps inflammation in your joints. It helps systemic inflammation. So BPC. Mm -hmm. Uh, Thymus and alpha is a peptide that's great for immune function and modulation. So it comes from the thymus gland, which typically as you get older, it shrinks and goes away. (laughs) Uh, But when you were younger, it was active in helping to really help mature your immune cells. Yeah. And alpha comes from the thymus gland. That's great for immune function. We have thymus and beta, which is a close relative of thymus and alpha. That's great for musculoskeletal soft tissue repair. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I had elbow surgery recently. It was fantastic for helping me recover from that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you see how there, there are, uh, I just listed a few, there are peptides for right. almost any, <laughs> any physiologic process you're looking to help improve anxiety, depression, weight loss, sexual function, even hair loss, um, mm-hmm. skin, you can find almost a peptide for almost any issue that you're trying to address. And how do you take a peptide? Or how yeah, do you question. use a pe- peptide? <laughs> yeah, so it, it depends on, on, on the type. So some of them are oral, mm-hmm. like BPC is oral. Some of them are a topical, like Dihex mm-hmm. is a great one for memory. That's a topical cream. Uh, some of them are nasal spray. A uh, C-Link is a great one for anxiety and mm-hmm. for immune function. Uh, that's a nasal spray. Some of them are injectable, like mm-hmm. um, thymus and alpha and beta and uh, CJC. And uh, CJC is one of the growth hormone peptides we use. Those are our subcutaneous injections. Mm-hmm. And so it depends on which peptide you're using and why. I'll caution the listener that there is a black market out there. There are, <laughs> are a number of direct-to-consumer stores where you can go and buy what you think might be a peptide that might perhaps potentially by chance resemble what you're trying to get. You don't go to don't, Amazon, in other words. And then you just don't know what you're getting. It's, or, the, or it's the wild west out there. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, when I work with clients, uh, I prescribe from uh, you know reputable compounding pharmacies. We have certificates of authenticity, quality assurance is top notch. And, and, and that's really important when you're looking at using peptides. Mm-hmm. And I think that's important for all supplements. You don't yeah. want to just be buying something that's super generic. Yeah. Because you want it to be able to your body to be getting the optimum that it needs in good quality and not filled yeah. with fillers that you're you don't even know what you're doing. And I think an important thing you said too is to to check with a health practitioner before you start diving into right. the peptide soup and just choosing that's, things that's on right. your own. Yeah, because that like you said, there's a lot of different peptides out there and you want to make sure you're having one that is matching up with what you need. Absolutely. Yeah. And do you, what are your, some of your favorites? You mentioned a few there. Those are your favorite ones for, let's uh, pick for male patients when we're talking about really helping with sexual function and for females too. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. I I will, I'll start with the fact that it's very individualized and there's no one size fits all. This is not cookie cutter medicine. This is, you know, it's precision medicine. And so we really individualize based on what we're trying to address. Yeah. So Uh, important guys. Yeah. Certain guys that may be inflammation, other guys that may be immune function, other guys that may be insulin issues. And so it really depends on what it is. I'll tell you a couple of peptides that most people probably have not thought of before is that BPC and thymus and beta when used in the right combination can actually be used for ED, which is something a lot of people haven't heard of. Yeah. 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 That's great. 
Yeah. yeah. And, and again, that, that's addressing the inflammatory potential uh, etiology for, again, it's choosing the right men carefully. And that makes sense. And and we didn't even really touch base on fertility and or infertility. And yeah. we talked about testosterone earlier and this decrease in testosterone. And have you seen, or do you see patients that are looking for help with infertility in your oh practice? My gosh. Yeah. It, it's interesting you asked that because we started the show talking about uh, the testosterone pandemic and right. <laughs> there are, there are three big studies worldwide that show the exact same findings of this, you know, 30% decline. And there was a great study out of Israel that looked at fertility and it showed the exact same curve. So if you mm. overlaid that curve of fertility, whether it was sperm concentration or sperm uh, count with the curves of testosterone, it was an identical decline. And so mm. it, it's clear to me that it, it's an issue with testicular function that we're seeing. Yeah. And that totally makes sense, especially when we're talking about the toxins in our environment. And what about a cell phone usage and keeping like a cell phone in your front pocket near uh, the testicle yeah. area? Are, have you seen, you know, do you recommend or not recommend doing that? Is that, are you seeing any changes scientifically in studies? So we, we know the damaging effects of EMF. I mean, right. there's, no, there's no question about that. Yeah, that's, so, we have that research. <laughs> yeah. So that, that, there's no question there. Now, you know, keeping phones close to your testicles. Yeah. That's going to put, obviously put that energy closer to your balls. But the, the, the other concern I have with EMF is what are you doing with your phone when you're sleeping? Yeah. Right. And most guys have it right there by their bed and it's right next to their head. Right. And that EMF is just cranking away at their brain all night, every night. And so right. I'm much more focused on that and keeping your phone on either airplane, airplane mode, no Bluetooth, uh, or at least away from your body across the room, not by your dresser. To me, that's really the, the, one of the best ways you can remove EMF. But uh, mm. yeah, I, I think that putting it by your, in your pocket, I'm sure there's some effect there. Yeah. EMF. So we could probably have a whole nother conversation just about EMFs EMF. and the way that they affect your body. Cause it's so yeah. huge. And I love what you said about not having it close to your brain because our brain is where we have our specific glands and yeah. organs. We need to make our hormones. Yeah. We don't want to be shutting it off, especially in the frontal lobe. We want to help our memory and help our cognition for sure. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And most men who have issues with low testosterone or infertility, if it was just the testicles alone that were the problem, you would see the pituitary gland trying to stimulate. You, you see increased luteinizing hormone and FSH. Mm -hmm. and, and in most men, you don't see elevation in either of those. And so that tells you that you have a primary and a secondary etiology there, mm -hmm. meaning for the listener that it's not just a problem with the testicles not functioning, it's a problem with your pituitary not responding appropriately either. And that whole axis, if you will, the, the hypothalamic pituitary um, gonadal axis is off. And, right. and so, yeah, the brain is integral in that whole process. Yeah. Communication breakdown. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that happens a lot, especially when we uh, separate our body into, or segment it. I'm just going to shut this off. My brain is not going to connect to the rest of my body and the communication doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't quite work that way. Yeah. yeah. And then, so the HPA axis, one last question today, how about the stress factor in the HPA axis and the HP uh, gonadal axis? Are they connected in that stress level and the adrenal system and um, what you're seeing with the testosterone yeah. levels. Yeah, absolutely. What happens, massive effect, short answer, longer answer for the listeners is cortisol is a stress hormone. And what cortisol is going to do is cortisol is going to go to the brain and it's going to turn off a bunch of signals. Mm -hmm. It's going to turn off LH, which is luteinizing hormone, which is what tells your testicles to make testosterone. It's going to turn off TSH, which is what tells your thyroid gland to make thyroid hormone. And it's also going to stop the conversion of T4, which is the technically the pro-hormone of your thyroid hormone to T3, which is the active form. Right. And so massive effect on, on not just your testosterone, but also your thyroid. It also affects blood sugar. It raises blood sugar levels as well. And so now your pancreas having to work harder, produce more insulin to try to keep up with that chronically elevated blood sugar, promoting eventual insulin resistance. And so they're, again, they're all interconnected. And this is why getting a hold on stress and developing good stress resilience is so critical. Critical. Right. That mindset piece all back to what we first started yeah. talking about, how important right. the mindset all piece connected. is. <laughs> it's all connected. Yeah. Dr. Tracy, tell us about your amazing book. You talked a little bit, but the book Mail 2.0, how can uh, listeners 
find that, get a copy. Sure. And you have some other amazing freebies too, which I'll let you mention because there's so For many. Sure. In the, yeah. Oh, so absolutely. Many. I tell, appreciate tell it. Yeah. How they can find out more about that. Thank you. Yeah. So my book, Mel 2.0, was my first book, her first published book a couple of years ago, best selling book that was really for me many years in the making of how do I how do I transform the way we think about men's health and men's health until recently had only always been here's your Viagra or here's your testosterone and I'll see you in three months. And right. I'm trying to really change the paradigm. And that's my foray into writing. That was a, uh, quite a journey for me <laughs> <laughs> to write a book. Uh, yes. Uh, I know that one. My book came you, out last you've year. Been yes, there too. I've, been, I've been there. Yeah. I'm like yeah. a new person now. <laughs> yeah. People tell me to write another one. Are you kidding me? If All I right. go live on another planet where nobody talks yeah. to me, maybe. So anyway, so um, I'm going to share with your listeners um, a free copy. Now, if they want to get a actual paperback copy, uh, it's, it's a free copy. They can go to my website, drtracygappin.com forward slash limitless and actually get a free copy, just cover the shipping. But I'm going to do that even better. If your listeners will text the word health to 26786, again, that's the word health to 26786, they're going to get a number of gifts from me. Number one, I'm going to give you my 10 secrets to high performance health that you can start implementing today. Second, you're going to get a digital copy of Mail 2.0 complimentary. Third, you're going to get information about my upcoming high performance health conference, which is going to be here in Sarasota, Florida. It's going to be an amazing event where we dive deep into the world of, of high performance and, and how do we use a lot of the cutting edge tools and wearable technology and genetics and um, all the, the cutting edge biohacking fun toys that we have at our disposal. Um, how do we take a systems <laughs> approach to health? How do we put all these pieces together? And we're going to have some amazing experiences there. So uh, that's June 10th through 12th and here in Sarasota, Florida at the Hyatt Regency. You'll get information on that event and then you'll also also get a link to book a discovery call with me and my team if you want to learn how uh, we could possibly work with you. And then there might be a follow-up ultimate peptide guide gift as well, perhaps. <laughs> wow. That's all I have to say is, wow, that's amazing. Thank you so much for all those gifts and to really help our listeners to embrace their health and really feel the best that they can be. I love it. And one last question is two. <laughs> one, where can people find you? You mentioned your website, but how can they mention your website again? And then also following, how can they follow you to keep up to date on all the amazing things you're doing? Thank you. Yeah. So my website is uh, gapinstitute.com. And if you text the word health to 26786, I'll be sending a periodic update as well. Through Gaffin Institute, I have a massive blog that I've created over the last probably six or seven years now. So a lot of content on there as well. And I'm on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Yay. Love it. We can find you and stalk you. Okay. One last question. If you had an unlimited budget, what would you do right now to make the biggest impact on the planet? Holy cow. Unlimited. Sky's the limit. <laughs> Wow. That's a great question. What would I do with unlimited budget? I think it would have to be, I think it would have to be, have to be education. I, I think that it's, and our biggest resource is time. So I would really be using that money toward, toward time for education, because a lot of people, if you just give them the tools to know what to do, how to help themselves, it's not giving men fish. Is teaching them how to fish. Exactly. <laughs> and so I, I think I would empower them by, by providing education for them, guidance, support, training, teaching, education, because I, I think that would have the biggest impact. Love it. A That's an easy though. one. Yeah. Ding. We can easily make that one happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Dr. Tracy. It's been such a joy to have you on the show and I can't wait to share it with the world. Uh, I appreciate it. It was fun.